golden bell. If you're cooking the lunch, you're ready to sell. You're lucky if you can find a Ring, ring goes the bell. You mind your school days there, uh, young guy? Oh, it reminds me of the nightmare that I was school. <laughs> Terrible. Really? Oh, oh my horrible. gosh. Well, you mean being with OG is better than being in school? Oh, this is the best kind of school. Everybody should oh be so God, lucky. This is so what about, what do you think of our uh, Mr. P here? So oh, far? Mr. P, so far, enlightening. I know, and we just got started. So, uh, this thing is really going to take off. I, I, am, I am so excited. You know what? It's so funny. We, we talked all last week about the Crazy Tuesday, uh, Money Love Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And then we had... Uh, do nothing Wednesday, do nothing Thursday, do nothing Friday, or we call it the calmness. Guess what today was? Up two, three points. Another calm day. And Another I, yawner. I know, I mean, everybody, there was some action during the day, but it, after all was said and done, it's like, eh, the tug of war con continues. But you know who made money today? Who's that? Mr. P. Oh. Every day, practically. This, this guy makes money. And I, I, if you don't mind, Mr. P, uh, we didn't quite finish your uh, your thoughts about uh, Hank Paulson, about why he became treasurer uh, of the United States and left. You, you were talking about some big numbers, like a thousand times more money at Goldman Sachs. Correct. That Mr. Paulson made. Right. So he gave up this like huge income. Right. To come to uh, help our president out. Right. To, to help us, all of us taxpayers out. Right. Isn't that what we're supposed to believe? That right. he's a noble man. Right. He's at that stage in his life where money doesn't matter. He wants to give something back to society. Right. So, so you're telling me this isn't true? I, I think it's a, a wild piece of disinformation. It's designed to lead you into drawing a false conclusion. The conclusion would be, of course, that Paulson is a noble guy. In fact, I, I probably couldn't disagree more, but let's talk about that for a second. <clears throat> no CEO of an investment bank can just walk away without collapsing his company. We don't live in the era of investors anymore. We live in the era of speculators. And if Hank Paulson walked, the stock would collapse. So he can't walk. So what can he do? How can he get out knowing the whole investment banking industry is going to collapse without collapsing the banking industry? Well, the answer is, I'll just go be Treasury, se Treasury Secretary. My entire financial affairs will have to go into a blind trust. I will very carefully, or perhaps through magic hand signals, instruct the leader of the trust to liquidate my position uh, shortly after I'm the Treasury Secretary. And nobody knows I bailed just before the crash. Oh my God. So he's like the smartest guy in the world. Genius. Another, like you! Genius. Oh my god, there's another genius oh world boy. Here. Welcome home. I thought <laughs> Hank Paulson was a smart guy. And a noble guy. And a noble guy, but now I add genius to my thoughts about Mr. Paulson. How about you, YG? I think all the geniuses belong on Rooster. Maybe we can get Hank. Do you know Hank? Are you guys <laughs> I'd, I'd sure like to meet Hank. I'll bet. I'd love... Oh, could you imagine the debate between sure, Mr. P and, and, and the tr Secretary of the Treasury? Oh Ooh, my God! Fireworks, baby. We would. Fireworks. Do so, I mean, YouTube would explode. They couldn't keep up with all the people viewing that show. Mr. Paulson, please. I know. I've heard you're a watcher, possibly, but I know you love those trips to China. There's a lot more going on there. Oh, but right. I'm telling you, don't let don't, don't let YouTube down. YouTube is, uh, is is a big potential for you there, sir. But uh, anyway, oh, a lot of people uh, have been wondering about uh, oil going way up. Uh, why is oil? I, I know you have some views on why oil is up. Oil today shot up again. It's, it's, up, it's back almost to its high again today. The market's doing nothing, right? But oil keeps going up. What's going on, Mr. P? What do you think of that? Well, first of all, um, there is almost nothing in the world that can drive the price of oil day to day. Think about that for a second. Price of oil went up today 2% or I'm not sure the exact number, but on a good day the price of oil will go up 2%. Well, if we all drove 2% more, um, we would have to drive an extra three or 400 million miles a day. Okay, well, we didn't do that, obviously. Why did it go up today? And again, we're in the era of the speculator. And there are some very interesting things here. Uh, in any commodity which is bid-driven, gold, oil, you, you bid it every day. There's a big auction, and you sell bazillions of barrels of oil. 
Well, it turns out that in the end game of that, that the price reacts exponentially as the bids rise arithmetically, meaning you can whipsaw the price. Okay. Now, if you do it, or young guy does it, you're going to whipsaw the price up by buying at the last minute. I'm going to rush in at the end of the day and buy 30 or 40 super tankers worth of oil. Well, you can do that, and the price will go way up. A lot. But you've got a problem. And the problem is now, you had to take delivery of that oil. Well, great. You drove the price up. You now also own it. So how do you sell it? As soon as you try to sell it, the price will crash. And so YG can't do it, OG can't do it, and the Cheeto Fund can't do it. Okay. But what if you were OPEC? Oh, I wouldn't be here wasting my time with you. I'm sorry. I love you. <laughs> right. I wouldn't be there. But let's take a look at that for a second. OPEC can go into the end of a bid cycle, bid the hell out of the price of oil, drive the price through the roof, and when the time comes to take delivery, of which they would have to sell at a loss, they can go back to the market and go, oh, by the way, where are you going to get the oil that I'm going to take delivery from? And the answer is, you get the oil that I'm going to take delivery from, from my oil well. Unbelievable. Okay. So once again, this, this proves your point. You were talking about disinformation being a sign. Correct. But now, but now let's look at that for a second. So I can go back to the market and go, so yeah, I bid the price of oil up 2% today, which is maybe $6 billion. But since you have to buy the oil over on the market for me, why don't we just wash the trade? Yeah, it washes up because it's all it's all. Well, let's well, just wash the control. Control. You control and, the whole thing. And you, the market, well, let's make YG the market. You make a commission on this sale. This will improve my reputation with the ladies, YG, by the way. You could be making a lot of money. The right. ladies will love this. Oh, all right. Gosh. Well, this is excellent. You're the market, so you don't really care if oil gets shipped and if oil gets taken delivery of. All you care is you get your one-tenth of one percent commission. So I will just pay you your one-tenth of one percent commission. Right. I drove the price up two percent today. That leaves me with a 1.9 percent profit on a couple of billion dollars. And thank you very much. And so the, so the question is, is the whole oil game, the supply and demand issue, is a huge disinformation issue, and nobody does disinformation better than the Arabs. Okay, well... The most brilliant people in the world, so unlike the Arabs, then. I mean, they've got all the money, they, they've done a ton. Of, the Russians are doing, hey, YG's a Russian. I, oh, yes. Do you feel KGB. insulted that he didn't include the Russians in the smartest people? No, no, I like when people underestimate our people. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> I mean, Putin, I hope he's not watching the show, because I think he might be We're short and we're drunk, but we come and pack a mean punch. I know, I know, but, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't know much about this, but I would add Mr. Putin to it. Uh, I just want to say one more thing here, because uh, we don't have a lot of time. But I know the, the type of books that, uh, that Mr. P has read here, and I just want to show them very quickly to our viewing audience. The Black Swan is one of the books. Uh, another book, uh, and we'll talk about this book uh, in the next segment, Winner Take All, uh, which, it, which is, is a book he's going to talk about in the next segment. And the third book is uh, Trading for a Living. So find those three books and find the, uh, the fifth discipline, and you'll be on your way to being as smart as Mr. P. Thank you, students, for attending Rooster School. Woo! And now it's recess until the next segment. See you later. later. <laughs>